<laughs> kind sir. Allow me to present myself. The name, sir, is Richard Harding Davis. What brings you here, Mr. Davis? Good question, sir. Very good. Shows your repertorial training. What manner of men are these? Are these your so-called gentlemen of the press? Or are they your laboratory attendants? In answer to your question, sir. I've come to Louisiana without a banjo on my knee. I've come here in search of a story of... Gave it a big enough play, didn't I? This is a story of stories. What have you done with it? Is this what you call news? Do you want to know what I call it? I call it the dead facts. The dead facts strung together by a deaf, dumb, blinded editor. Me, Burke Devlin, I've got the story. Preserved in alcohol, no doubt. No, I've got it in my aching heart. And you want to know how I got it? By crawling through dirt and filth and muck and smut. By finding truth and beauty where you'd never expect to find it. You know who's lying dead on the bottom of a lake. The son of an Ohio country doctor, a child who refused to follow in his father's footsteps because he was also a child of the 20th century. He was a boy who stole under the tent of a faraway war only because he had outgrown the motor bikes and the motor cars and because he had a hunger for the flying machine. He knew no flags and no enemy but one, death. And when the war ended, he found himself a reluctant hero. He hadn't asked for the confetti and the flags, and he ran from them. Hello? The hell with that. You listen to this. He was lost until he found those pylons, those three bony fingers of death sticking out of the earth, waiting to bring him crashing down. And he chased those pylons from coast to coast, Canada in the summer, Mexico in the winter. The four of them living out of one suitcase and one can opener. And it wasn't the money he was after, any more than it was the glory, because the glory only lasted until the next race. He was a man conquered by the flying machine. And that isn't all. He forsook all earthbound vanities, home, family, and love. Why? Because deep down he knew that a man without blood in his veins has got to fall down sooner or later. And Roger Schumann fell down. The night before he fell into the lake, he fell so far and so hard for the sake of 